Hi, and welcome to the Wise Bench Workshops. Today we're going to learn about nature journaling, or as I like to call it, the art of observation. Now your first question might be, what is nature journaling? Well, nature journaling is the practice of observing and recording what we see when we're out in nature through the process of drawing and note taking. Today I have chosen the hawthorn. The word hawthorn comes from the old English meaning thorny hedge. And the hawthorn actually has many different names. It is known scientifically as Crataegus monogyna, Oskelga as Schlachgal, and also as white thorn or the may tree. And in Ireland, it's known as the fairy tree. Here we're going to go through some basic drawing techniques. First of all, I would like to bust a myth Everybody can draw. I'm going to repeat that. Everybody can draw. All you need to do is practice. Just like any skill, you need to work on it before you can become an expert. There's a few rules for the drawing that's associated with nature journaling, and I'm going to go through them one by one now. So the first step is to observe. This is really important. What we're going to do is have a look at our specimen, which is the leaf here of the hawthorn tree, which we saw earlier in the video. And this is the whole piece of the hawthorn with the leaves and fruit as well. So we're going to start off with choosing a pencil. So as you can see here, I have my graphic pencils beside me and my colouring pencils in case I want to add some colour to the finished drawing. I like to draw with a F pencil. Um, I find it's a good way to start off. And if we want to, we can change from pencil to um, markers later on. And that will actually allow us to get a really nice fine edge onto our drawing and I have a bag of markers here again similar to this they range in size rather than weight as our pencils do but it's really good to have a good selection of materials if you want to draw however it's also completely fine if all you have is a ballpoint pen if you want to draw you just start and give it a go now, first of all, all we need to do is look at the overall shape of this leaf. And if you imagine that all these spaces were actually filled in, our leaf looks like a spade. So we're going to start drawing by drawing a spade shape. Now, you only need to draw lightly at the start because what we're going to do is we will rub out a lot of these lines that we um, end up making. So you look at the edge. So this is a firm edge of our leaf and it is quite V-shaped. So I'm going to go and do a bit of a V. But as I said, it's kind of spade shaped. So the top here, I will round out a little bit just like that, okay? And then we have a leaf stalk which is known as a petiole and that comes down and kind of kinks to the side down here where it actually gets a little bit fatter so I'm just going to put that detail in now but you can put it in later if you wish we can make this uh, thicker as we go as well so that's kind of how we start off and then we're going to observe our drawing a little bit more or not our drawing our actual leaf you can see the leaf has these veins. So this one in the center is known as the midrib. And then it has veins that go off to the side. So we can put the middle line straight in. And again, kind of light. If you follow the branch off to this side, we can come up a little bit and branch off. And the same on the other side of the leaf. It goes along there. You bring it up and bring it up like that. And if you follow up the midrib, you'll see each area where there is a line. You can add that into your drawing. We have done what's known as a block shape. So we've looked at the block shape of our leaf and we've recreated it here. Now, the next thing we need to do 
is to check all the little details on the leaf and therefore making this drawing a little bit more similar to what our leaf actually looks like. So we're going to modify our drawing after we check our details. So we've given ourselves these little guidelines and these are important because now we can start looking at how the rest of the leaf is actually shaped. So if you follow down, you can see where the lobes of these leaves actually are. Now what we're going to do is we have our basic leaf shape. We can actually see each of the lobes match our actual leaf. And what you can do now is you can clean up all the edge um, little bits of lines that are there on your drawing using a rubber. You can also see that our leaf has a little bit of damage or spots on it. So if you're going to color that in and you want to record that um, damage as well, you can add in just a couple of little circles onto your leaf in places to remind you where that damage actually was. This could be something that's really noteworthy in a nature journal that you could see the health of your trees, maybe on your property or in your community over years. If you do nature journals every single year, you'll be able to record the change in the health of your trees in that area, which is something that can be really, really interesting to do. You can get a whole range of pens. You can get really fine 0 0.05. You can get 0.5. You can get all the way up to um, really thick pens and also brush pens. But I think a 0.1 is really nice for giving an edge to our drawings here. Um, what you will need to do is after you have highlighted the edges that you want to be really um, fine and show up really strong you'll need to use your eraser and to clean up the rest of it and you can get rid of any things that you might think are a little bit of a flaw or something that you don't really want to highlight in the drawing and then we can use our coloring pencils to add some color and some more detail I'm now going to add a little bit of colour to this to give it a real pop and we can really look at the detail of this little mottling or damage that's on the leaf. Now that we've learned the four basic steps for drawing anything in your nature journal, we'll recap what they are. Now that you've learned the four steps for the basic drawing techniques of nature journaling, I think you are ready to give it a go yourself. Thank you so much for coming along and joining me today on my workshop. And I really hope that you have learned some interesting skills are excited about nature journaling and will head out now into the great outdoors and find something interesting to be your study. Best of luck and I can't wait to talk to you again.